Hi folks, how you all doing? Cross to six here. Hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day, evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I hope you really enjoy my content. And if so, if you would please, uh, once you've watched the video, hopefully to the end, uh, you consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And I'm trying to grow the channel, but I can only do that with your help. Uh, so hit that like and subscribe. It really, really helps me out. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with today. Now, I've been asked by one of my subscribers to do a video for new players, somebody that's just joined the game and has found it all a bit overwhelming, a bit confusing, uh, you know, when you're first presented with the garage and you've got all of this information uh, in front of you. Don't panic. Don't worry. It's fairly easy to get around and to understand. It really is. It's not that difficult, to be quite honest. So I'm going to do my best to try and explain uh, the mechanics of the game, of, of what it, how it all comes together, what it's all made up of, uh, and hopefully just give you a little bit of an understanding um, of what to expect uh, within the game. Now, so what's this game all about then? Well, it's a World War II tank simulation game. Uh, and the idea is, is that you've got 30 players, you've got 15 on one side and 15 on the other and you are going to be on one of them sides uh whether it's the red or the green team now the idea behind it is is that that you start off on a battlefield somewhere on one of the maps and eventually you've got to go and battle all the other 15 players on the opposing team and you've either got to capture their flag or destroy every uh tank on the opposing team uh, or you've got to defend your flag but either way you've got to stop them capturing your flag uh, or indeed destroy them all that's the idea Fairly simple, isn't it? Um, how do you do that? Well, you've got different types of tanks. So you've got your light tanks, which is, this is a light tank here. So what are they designed for? Light tanks are designed really for getting information for the team. Uh, and they really come into their own in the second half of the match because they're usually fast, agile, uh, depend on the, the light tank. Uh, the cannon reloads quickly or if it's got a clip like this it takes 20 odd seconds or whatever with a three round clip so then the light tanks are, are predominantly for getting information early on to your team so that you, the rest of your team can then make a decision of, of where is the best place to go to on the map to basically defend the flag or try and get early shots in to take the opposing team out as quick as possible then from your lights You've got your mediums so your medium tanks they're not as fast as your light tanks most of them and they've got better cannons but they're not as agile as the light tanks so what are mediums designed for they're kind of uh they're they're designed to assist the heavies uh to aid them out on the battlefield effectively and to to kind of uh, get them sneaky shots in uh, and and run around get circled tanks and get shots in and all that kind of stuff and then from your medium tanks, you've got your heavy tanks. Now, your heavy tanks, they're the brawlers. They're the things that will get in your face mostly. Not every tank can do that. Not every heavy tank can do that. But mostly, they get in your face. They're the front line. They're the ones that are pushing uh, the battle forward to, uh, to the enemy. And the idea behind it is, is that mediums will support the heavies and the lights will give the information. And the second half of the match your lights will come into their own because people have, have been damaged and they haven't got much health pool left and the lights can come in and kind of clean up if you like. It doesn't always work that way, but that's the idea behind it. So then from there, you've got your tank destroyers. So now your tank destroyers, they're more your support vehicles. They're the ones that have got normally big hard-hitting cannons uh, with a view of doing lots of damage. But a lot of them are slow reloads and all that kind of stuff. And they're kind of sneaky-beaky. Uh, you know, hiding in bushes. And as you'll see on the different maps, uh, there's there's bushes dotted foliage all over the place. And you need to use that to your advantage. Now, if you'd like me to do uh, another video on um, hold down techniques, side scraping, uh, using foliage, uh, camouflage, how to camouflage your vehicle and all that kind of stuff, then leave it in the comments below and I'll be quite happy to do another video for that. But this video is really designed for the newer players that are literally just starting out and I find this a little bit overwhelming, perhaps a little bit confusing. Um, so anyway, if we go into the tech tree, and your tech tree is up here on this line here, and you've got all your different nations right the way down from Japan, China, 
you know, and you just work your way through them all, Italian lines. Um, and the idea behind it is, is that when you first start this game, you will be given a certain amount of tanks from different nations. And it's usually uh, effectively two or three uh, levels, tier two or three. So you've got your tiers. So you've got tiers one through ten. So obviously your tier two, tier three matches, tanks, they're the low end of the game. That's really just to get you used to the game, uh, how the tank operates, moving around and all that kind of stuff. And when you get to your tier tens, that's effectively when you, you know, your tier ten tanks, uh, say something like the Progetto 65, you know, you can't go any further than this. Uh, but they're more hard-hitting harder matches to play so don't be rushing yourself to try and get up to tier 10 as quick as possible learn the game play the game as much as you can in the lower tiers because that's your bread and butter and that's where you're going to learn about all the different elements of the maps and where the main fighting takes place and what type of tank you've got and if you get killed early on it doesn't matter it's it's a, a low tier tank so you're not going to lose that much in credits uh, most of the time and then as you slowly start to work your way up the tech tree line, uh, obviously you'll become more experienced and you'll start having better matches and hopefully hopefully get a lot more experienced in the game and realise where you need to be on the battlefield with a, any given particular type of tank uh, and, and the best place for you to go to in order to get the best damage that you can. So the idea behind the game is that you want to do as much damage as you can uh, within reason uh, to earn as many credits as you can. Uh, the, you're going to die lots and lots and lots in this game. You really are. So, you know, you just got to accept the fact is, is that there are a lot of decent players out there that have been playing longer than you and their crew skills are probably through the roof. So they're going to outspot you. Uh, they're going to reload before you. Uh, and they're just more experienced players. But, you know, don't give up. Just keep going because you will get there. And it's all about practice. The only way you're going to get practice is, excuse me, the only way you're going to get practice is literally by playing the game over and over and over again. And that's it in a nutshell. Now, there's certain things within the game that you can do, uh, which I find quite helpful for me personally. So when you first start the game and you start playing games, you get given personal reserves. So like me, I'll earn extra credits, an extra 50% for credits for an hour. And now I've got 120 of them, so I just put them on whenever I'm playing my premium tanks earn extra credits within the game and you've got crew experience and just free experience uh, and so what this does is it gives you up top here on the right this is your free experience this is what you can use to buy different elements of say a tech tree line that you're going down for like a new cannon a new turret a new engine and all that kind of stuff this is your in-game credits so your silver earning effectively and you use this to buy the different elements um, so with your uh, XP, you need to earn a certain amount of XP to unlock the next uh, cannon on a particular given uh, tech tree line. And you can't do that until you've earned the XP to unlock the next level of that cannon. Then you've got to unlock the turret and the tracks and all that kind of stuff. And that all takes XP to do that. And the only way you earn that is literally is by playing it game after game after game after game. And you've probably heard people saying, oh, he's, he's got a stock cannon. And what that means is it's the first cannon on the on that particular vehicle. And it might be that the person is just grinding away to try and get to the next gun, to get onto the next gun, uh, so on and so forth. Now, your silver, your credits, this is the thing that actually buys that piece of equipment. Your XP just unlocks it, but this buys it. Your silver buys it, your credits. Now, this the gold here, this is real money. This is the, the real... Uh, in-game money now the only way you can get gold is by buying it so if you go to uh, let's say the store you'll come up with this screen here so if you want to buy gold this costs real money now my advice to you as a new player is simply this don't go mental you don't need to honestly trust me you don't need to go mental and I wish I'd known this when I first started playing this game uh, and it all looks attractive doesn't it when you see the 30,500 gold here at the end of the day, that's real money. That's real hard-end cash out of your bank. You don't need to spend that. My strongest advice to you would be the first thing that you need to do is uh, buy premium time. I would say start off by buying 30 days worth of premium. Why 30 days? Well, because it gives you uh, pretty much a full month. 
uh, of earning extra uh, silver, extra credits up here. And to buy the 30 days, which was 2,500, is eight pounds 52 for me. So that'd be about what, 13, 14 dollars if you're in, in the US. Uh, and that's more palatable than spending nearly 90 pounds, which is like, I don't know, 120, 130 dollars. You don't need to do that. Can't stress that enough. You do not need to do that. So please don't start just spending willy nilly. You can if you want. It's it's your wallet, it's your money. It's entirely your choice. But my, I wish I'd known this when I first started playing this game. You don't need to do that. The best thing you can do is buy some premium time. It gives you extra credits, uh, but your earn rate up here, uh, and, and that just makes sense to me. Now you got premium vehicles. So if we go back into the store again, you got premium vehicles. Now effectively, your premium vehicles uh, you can buy again with hard earned cash. Now what's the Good thing and the bad thing about premium vehicles. Well, the good thing is, is that they earn you extra credits. Um, so it might be a 30% a extra earn rate or a 50% extra earn rate. So what you would, uh, above what you would normally earn, say, with a premium account, if you're running a premium vehicle, it gives you that extra little bit of boost. So it's good for getting more credits. But the other thing that the, the premium vehicles are good for are training crews. That's another good thing. So you're earning credits whilst training your crew in, in a particular tank or a particular nation. Because you can always swap that uh, member out, your, your commander or your driver, or you can swap the whole lot out. Now, how do you do that? So say, for instance, I wanted to uh, put my commander here into a different tank. All I do is send him to the barracks. So he's gone. So now this tank hasn't got a commander. So say I selected a different tank, it's got to be of the same nation, uh, and I put him in that tank, I've then got to retrain him to that particular tank. So that's how you do it for, uh, you effectively for uh, bottom crew, so that's, that's him back. So say I want to put my commander into a different tank because he's got all more skills than, say, any other um, crew member that, that I've got, another commander perhaps, then... I can you retrain him into a new tank and then so say it's a premium vehicle I can then put another commander in there and start retraining on other skills Do you see what I mean so it's the premium vehicles are good for retraining your different crew of, of the tank itself um, so that's what I use my premium vehicles for plus earning extra credits but if you want me to go into a little bit more uh, in depth about that then by all means leave it in the comments below I'm quite happy to do that so yeah, other than that, you then click on your battle, go into battle. But before you can do any of that, you've got to set up so your ammunition. You've got your different types of ammunition, which is your armor piece and APCR, high explosives. And by moving these sliders here, you can put however many you want onto the vehicle. Now you're only given a certain amount of um, rounds uh, ammunition within the vehicle. And it's up to you, uh, however you split them up between all three, or you could just have... Uh, all two these are your premium uh, shells which obviously cost 4800 credits so but every time you fire a shell there'll be 4800 comes off of this figure here definitely so you've got to bear that in mind whereas opposed to your standard round is 1060 you see the difference wargaming able to to make money out of you effectively <laughs> so just bear that in mind so once you've set up these and you've clicked applied That'll then come back to the garage like this. And so your equipment, this is all the different elements of equipment that you can use on your tank uh, to make your tank better out on the battlefield. Things like vents, which gives you 5% 5 5 to all of your crew skills, enhanced gun lane drive, spall liner, so for artillery and that, but I wouldn't worry too much about artillery at the moment in this game because it's been nerfed quite a bit. So if you're in a light tank, you want to think of things like camouflage nets, binox or coated optics, so what's the difference between coated optics and binoculars? Well, the coated optics, it's on all the time. It gives you a 10% boost to your viewing range. And it's on all the time. Whereas your te binoculars, uh, you've got to physically stop, wait three seconds before it kicks in. Yes, it will give you an extra 25% viewing range. But the problem is, is you've got to stay still for, for three seconds. And if your tank's moving around, it's not effective. It's not working. Whereas your coated optics is pretty much working all of the time. Effectively. But you can, you know, you can work your way through all of these. And if you want me to go into depth about all of these different bits of equipment uh, that you can put on your tank, then by all means, leave it in the comments below. And I'll do a separate video on that if that's going to be helpful. Yeah. But other than that, 
once you set your tank up you've then got to come into your consumables consumables what are they for well you've got your repair kits your first aid kits and your fire extinguishers uh so why do you need all of them well you've got two types of repair kit you've got a small repair kit which is a manual one and you've got a large repair kit which is an automatic one obviously the the or the larger repair kit costs credits twenty thousand of them which comes off of this total here remember for every battle that you play and your small repair kits they're a lot cheaper they're three thousand as opposed to twenty thousand so but you manually press a, a button whether it's a three four five on your keyboard uh will activate that if say you get tracked out on the battlefield and you want to repair it quickly you hit say the the four key and it'll repair it automatically but you can only use this once but this one you can use multiple times and it's on a countdown with large repair kits and the same goes for small first aid kits and a large first aid kit and same with the automatic fire extinguisher and manual fire extinguisher now your case of cola uh whether it be food cola or whatever tea and biscuits for the british it gives you a 10% to all your crew skills. So the idea is, is you want to get your crew uh, to be the best that they can possibly be. And by putting stuff like this on, it, it boosts them up. It boosts their performance out on the battlefield. And that goes uh, through a wide range of things from your viewing range to your camouflage rating to repairing, how fast they'll repair, to loading, to aim time, and reliability out on the battlefield, if that makes sense. And, and so your the idea behind it is is that you want to try and have your crew the best that you possibly can and you've got to play around with these now what you can do is you can go to tanks gg uh or just type that tanks gg in your internet browser and you can go in there select your tank and you can play around with all the different elements of your consumables and all the rest of it and bits of equipment and skills uh, and it'll show you down the right hand side uh, of how it's in improving the performance uh, of the crew and of the vehicle and just play around with it until you get it just right that you feel it's just right and then either work your way up through that in the game itself or if you've already got all of that you can put it all on and then hopefully much uh, boost the the performance of your vehicle out on the battlefield and that's basically it that is basically it you got your tech tree line that you'll work your way up through all the different uh tanks uh, through all the different nations so you've got your germany you've got russia you've got the usa you've got france you've got britain uh, you've got china you've got japan you, you czechoslovakia you've got your polish you've got your swedish and you've got your italian line and you just work your way up through all of them now your different types of tanks whether it be your light tank your medium your heavy or your tank destroyer or your spg which is your artillery uh everybody plays whatever it is that they want to play within within their game uh, and you're going to meet a myriad of, of different types of vehicles. Uh, but other than that, go out, have some fun. If there's anything I've missed, then I apologise. But if you want any more information on anything else within the game, as I say, whether it's uh, hold down tactics, side scraping, all that kind of stuff, then by all means, leave it in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to do a separate video on that for you. But other than that, there's not a lot else I can say, uh, other than go out, have fun, and I'll see you all out on the battlefield. Until then... Take care, have a wonderful day, bye bye.